In this video, we'll learn what significant figures are, the rules for determining the number of significant figures in a quantity, and how to express a quantity to the correct number of significant figures when we add and subtract. We'll take it one step at a time. Let's first consider this rock and this pebble. If we were to put the pebble on the same scale as the rock, how much would they weigh together? Let's investigate. The scale we use to measure the rock measures objects using whole kilograms, like the ones in a doctor's office. That means that we cannot get more information than the units place. 24 kilograms plus or minus 1 kilogram. On this scale, a rock that weighs 24.27 kilograms and another rock that weighs 23.82 kilograms will both have a weight of 24 kilograms. Another way of saying that is that the weight of the rock is 24 point something kilograms. Only the tens and units place are significant. The other places are completely uncertain and so we cannot give information. Our second scale is much more precise. This is the one that might be used for weighing parcels to send by mail. This scale can give information down to the nearest gram, or 1 1,000th of a kilogram, plus or minus 0 0.001 kilograms. Which of the following pebbles would weigh 0 0.124 kilograms on this postal scale? Since the scale is only able to make measurements to the thousandths of a kilogram, that means that these pebbles would show weights of 0 0.125, 0 0.124, and 0 0.124 kilograms, respectively. So why is it that we report two digits for the mass of the rock, 24 kilograms, and three digits for the mass of the pebble, 0 0.124 kilograms? The reason is that we can only report digits that we are either perfectly certain about their value or the first digit about which there is uncertainty, meaning we stop reporting our measurements at the limit of the piece of the equipment. Since the large doctor's scale only reports to the unit's place, that's where we stop. Since the postal scale reports to the 0 0.001 kilogram, we express our measured quantity to the thousandths place. These reported digits are the significant figures of these measured quantities. The ruler in a doctor's office measures length to the nearest centimeter. Which of the following are possible measurements to the correct number of significant figures for the height of a person measured with this ruler? This person is 175 centimeters tall. The ruler is good enough to measure to the nearest centimeter, which means that we are completely sure about the 1 and the 7, and the 5 is the last digit that the ruler reports with any certainty. So that makes their height 175 centimeters, or 1.75 meters, tall, measured by that ruler. It's important to note that they are almost certainly not 1.750000 meters tall, but since the equipment we used is limited, we do not have any information past the third digit. If our patient measuring 1.75 meters tall were standing on a stack of papers with a height of 1.4 centimeters, what would that make the total height? First, when we combine measurements, it's really important that they be in the same units. So 1.4 centimeters is 0.014 meters. How many significant figures does the measurement 1.4 centimeters which is equal to 0 0.014 meters, have. That's right, 1.4 centimeters has two significant figures and so does 0 0.014 meters. That's because zeros to the left of the numbers are not significant. They are used as placeholders based on the order of magnitude, and so this quantity contains only two significant figures. So now we go do our addition. Let's start adding on the left. We'll stop as soon as we get to a level of precision with uncertainty in one of the values. We're definitely certain about the ones place, so 1 plus 0 equals 1. Similarly, we're certain about the tenths place, so 7 plus 0 equals 7. We are also certain about the hundredths place, so 5 plus 1 equals 6. But that's where our knowledge of the person's height ends. We have no idea what comes next. So we cannot report more information than we have, and so we stop at the hundredths place. Since something plus 4 is less than 5, we leave the 6 as it is. If the next number were something plus 5 or more, then we would round the 6 to 7. So that is the rule for addition and subtraction. Or, said another way, in addition and subtraction, we keep the fewest number of decimal places in the added or subtracted values. 
Now let's return to our first example with the rock and the pebble. We said that the rock weighs 24 kilograms and that the pebble weighs 0 0.124 kilograms. How many decimal places will the result of adding these two masses together have? There aren't any digits after the decimal in the measured quantity of 24 kilograms, so we are limited to the units place. So how much would the scale report if we weighed the rock and the pebble at the same time? Our scale wouldn't even notice the difference and would still report 24 kilograms. Taking significant figures into account, determine the difference of these two quantities. A 25 milliliter sample of orange juice is removed from a total of 1.75 liters in the container. How much juice remains in the container? First, we convert the 25 milliliters to liters using dimensional analysis. 25 milliliters is 0.025 liters. Let's line up our subtraction. We only report to the hundredths place, to three significant figures, and round to that place. That means that we have 1.73 liters remaining. 